Hey guys, today we're going to talk about some of the most beautiful energy of this year. We are in the midst of an, an extremely rare, very benefic, very, very beautiful and profoundly healing transit. We have Jupiter Venus coming into an exact alignment in the sky today. They were also an exact alignment yesterday. But the thing that is extra, extra magical about these two planets coming together this year is that they are coming together only one degree out of exact conjunction with the planet Chiron. Chiron is the wounded healer teacher archetype. Jupiter and Chiron only come together in the sky every between like 15 and 19 years. This is a unique and rare transit in and of itself. And then when we're adding Venus into it, this is very rare. This is a profound healing opportunity. There is something going on in the energetic field over this week, yesterday, today, moving over the next couple days that is truly helping us to alchemize some of the inner conflicts and demons that we have been fighting, the wounds that have been going on within us for a long period of time related to the past, finally heal, finally release, finally move on, and finally overcome some of these experiences that have been holding us back from really pursuing what it is that's in our heart. We have some magical energy today, you guys, some blessed energy, lucky, fortunate vibes. Let's get into this chart. Let's talk about how things are coming together for us in a little bit more detail and what we might be able to expect as we go through this energy over this next couple of days. Welcome back to my channel, you guys. Today is March 2nd, 2023. My name is Aubrey. This is your astrological outlook of the day where we are narrating the shift of the ages. Today, we've got some really beautiful healing, powerful energy to talk about. This is very rare. This is a very rare alignment, you guys. We're talking about a Jupiter-Chiron conjunction that is building and that is coming into exact effect over this next couple days throughout the month of March. If you guys saw my March overview, you know that that is really what is coloring sort of this first and second week of March. A lot of this Jupiter-Chiron energy, which is a rare energy in and of itself. We only have this alignment happening every, depending, sort of how things go between 15 and like 19 years. So we're talking almost a once in a 20 year transit. It's definitely doesn't happen every decade. So this is a rare alignment. And then simultaneously, the fact that it happens to be happening while Venus is also transiting into conjunction with Jupiter and Chiron just really infuses it with an even greater level of love and beauty and potential for this profound healing on this heart-based level of these old wounds and blockages to our heart, essentially, that have been keeping us from recognizing the truth of our value. And considering right now we have the North Node in the sign of Taurus, we have Uranus in the sign of Taurus, both of these planets currently ruled by Venus. Venus coming into this conjunction. Uranus in the North Node and Taurus, you guys, this whole process is about awakening us to the truth of our value as well. Because as we are transitioning ages right now, as we are changing paradigms, moving to the age of Aquarius, one of the fundamental requirements of us as individuals, as a part of this overall process is this process of self-actualization that goes along with it of us discovering who we really are what we're really good at what we really love what we're really meant to be doing like finding our purpose and moving towards that, rearranging our life in a way that is conducive and supportive to our personal growth along the lines of truly developing, cultivating our purpose, our activating our destiny. And as a result of that, discovering the fulfillment in this life that can be achieved internally as well as externally in forms of abundance of, you know, all kinds, wealth, all of that. The true gold of the soul that comes through like living your life in your authentic purpose and attracting, you know, the people and the situations and the opportunities and the partnerships and just the, the life circumstances generally that are a true match of your authentic truth and being able to experience like that true level of fulfillment that comes comes from living the life that you are really, really in alignment with and that is in alignment with you, you know, and that is where we are all being like silently, energetically nudged and urged right now as we are in this transition of ages. We're all being called into a higher version of ourself as this is a period of time where there is a, um, 
a frequency upgrade essentially that's going on in the universe and therefore that is affecting the consciousness of the frequency of the planet and the planet earth and therefore interacting with humans in a way that is causing us to need to go through this energetic upgrade as well which is doing its thing you guys to rearrange and shift our lives and our reality so that we are a better reflection of our true selves so that we can be a part of this un ongoing unfolding process so that's really what's happening on a greater level in the context of this shift of the ages and narrating the shift of the ages on this daily basis today we are talking about venus jupiter chiron together this very rare transit that is helping us to experience a healing on a pretty significant heart-based level that is going to do a lot to help bridge us from our past paradigm into our future paradigm in the context of this recognition of the truth of our value of gain, gaining this new awareness of our talents and our passions and you know what it truly is that authentically aligns with our heart so that we can go through this process of moving towards fulfilling a, a greater purpose for ourselves aligning with our higher selves and the way just right now in this particular activation that this energy is propelling us forward in this month this month of march you guys which is all about these fresh starts these brand new beginnings simultaneously once and for all like these very finalized endings also these very radically new and different revolutionary new beginnings for us we've got jupiter chiron and venus today in the sign of aries aries is the sign of the self so this is a self-healing. This is a self-propelled healing. This is reinstating, okay, like our faith and trust and belief in ourselves, like our, our belief that we can be successful, we can take a risk, we can pursue something, we can go after what we want, we can pursue our de desires, we can pursue our passions and like get a positive outcome. All of this is sort of being instilled in us on a frequency and energetic level right now. And the people that are likely to feel it the most are, of course, the people who have, you know, big planets or their sun or the moon or their ascendant in these like um 11 12 10 to 15 degrees probably of fire signs you guys are really getting the most beautiful blast of this energy but all of us everywhere right now to me this is an infusion coming through very focused on healing growing value somehow reawakening us to value somehow gaining wisdom gaining a greater sense of self-awareness gaining a greater sense of self-mastery overcoming these states of victimhood that have perhaps caused these inner battles or just these lower vibrational frequencies and experiences in the past that we are graduating from controlling our mind also not only do we have this beautiful alignment of planets going on today we also have an exact mercury Mercury Saturn conjunction that we do also need to address but this is really kind of focusing our mind and helping us to like have a level of control over our thoughts that are in alignment with that which we want to grow and pursue and that which we are focused on healing from right now so that we can release ourselves from whatever has been holding us back to go in this new direction of manifesting our dreams and personal growth and self-actualization and activating destiny all of uh the primary energetic indications as we're heading into the age of aquarius so Passion, fire, love, kind of high heart energy, but in a very just like fiery, passionate, ignited way. It's like igniting this heart based frequency within us that is like working on a magical level almost to sort of heal some of these old wounds that may have been holding us back. Like I said, from seeing who we really are, our true potential and our true capabilities, this specific aspect to me, it gives Cinderella vibes. I did see, uh, like in like a Facebook group or something, someone uh, refer to this aspect as a Cinderella aspect, and I had never seen that before because it is such a rare aspect. You know, like we're not. This is not something that we're often talking about because these planets rarely, rarely come together. The last time that Jupiter and Chiron came together, I believe, was in May of two thousand nine, and then before that was in um, June of 1990 i actually know somebody that has this exact exact jupiter chiron conjunction and it does give a very specific interesting vibe 
Okay, it was so it was May of 2009, June of 1990. That's the last time that we had these aspects, but Venus wasn't there either time, I don't believe. In May of 2009, you guys, that was a really, really powerful and significant Jupiter Chiron alignment because Neptune was there, which is interesting because Neptune is higher octave Venetian energy. So this transit could sort of give some of the same effects and vibes that went on in May 2009. However, it is a radically different feel to it because that was that happened actually in the sign of Aquarius. This energy is happening in the sign of Aries. So it was in the end of Aquarius. I think it was at like 26 or 27 degrees of Aquarius when that alignment happened. And then the one that happened in 2009, that was in June. And I believe Venus was in Taurus at that point in time, not in Cancer. Venus may have been within proximity, but it wasn't exact like it is now. So anyways, I back to this like Cinderella thing. So I saw somebody refer to it as a, a Cinderella aspect and I was thinking about it and I was like, you know what? Like that is actually a very accurate and good way I feel like of describing this energy because if you think about the Cinderella story, okay, this is the story of like rags to riches and it really does describe the hero's journey and the Chiron archetype of like, you know, this this beautiful girl, right? That she 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 was very worthy and very deserving to start out and then she goes through this extreme trauma right and she's like you know whatever happens with her family her mom and then her dad marries this evil woman and she's like abused and neglected and she's put into like this victim scenario right she becomes like the uh the cast out one and she has to experience this this uh trauma complex right that puts her in this victim state which is what happens typically in childhood when we have strong Chiron energy or when we're dealing with a Chiron archetype. And then it's this story of how she, it never gets her down though. Like she always maintains an ability to like, to love and to make the best of her circumstances. Like she always stays positive. She always stays optimistic. She never harbors like guilt and resentment. And she essentially like keeps her frequency and her vibration in a place that is still reflecting the value that she has inside, even if her external circumstances aren't demonstrating that to her. She never lets it break her spirit. And then one day there's this magical alignment that happens, right? Maybe it was Chiron, Jupiter, and Venus coming together in the sky, but there's this ball and then there's this magical occurrence for her and this fairy godmother shows up, which could be a metaphor for you know, just someone coming into your life and just you, this Venus Chiron, um, Venus Chiron Jupiter energy, like some type of massive show of like love or divine connection, like some type. I mean, the fairy godmother, this is sort of like, like this is a spiritual experience that she has, right? This could be some type of like higher level spiritual experience or some type of experience with someone that is communicating some type of higher level wisdom or love or something like that, that has this very transformative and healing effect. We're talking about Chiron. Chiron rules alchemy. Chiron is the alchemist. It's about alchemizing these lower states, transforming on the most fundamental level, these lower states based in, in uh, instinct and ego and victimization and subconscious programming to these states of self-mastery and trans personal transcendence and the ability to co-create consciously with God and universe. That is the ultimate outcome of going through this hero's journey experience that is described of the, by the Chiron archetype. That's why it's associated with true value and true wealth because when we go through the Chiron hero's journey, what we find at the end is this pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, which is represented or a metaphor for the, you know, the gold of our soul, this Self, sense of self mastery and this ability to consciously co create our experiences and align with the truth of our potential and self actualize and activate our destiny and therefore attract and experience these much more greater levels of fulfillment, joy, love, peace, happiness, and just purposefulness in our lives as well. That is the gold that we find at the end of the rainbow, at the end of the yellow brick road, right? There's so many different metaphors for this specific idea, the specific archetypal process, but 
in the context, you know, of where we're at now and this Cinderella story that's unfolding, that's what happened. She went through this metamorphosis. She went through this process of alchemization. She changed from, you know, the, the cast out like servant girl to this beautiful princess with like all of this external like uh, glory and beauty and like shimmering wonder. And then she shows up and she is the one that stands out. Like she's the one that stands out to the prince, even though that is isn't how other people have seen her or are used to seeing her who she really was inside like her levels of internal wealth were perceived by the actual like prince of the entire kingdom and so like even when the moment was over even when the transit ended and the magic you know changed like she was forever changed by that experience of having got to like externally perceive the value and the worth and the wealth that had been existing within her the whole time because because, you know, even though she experienced all of these horrible things, she never let it break her spirit and she managed to keep the frequency of love in her heart and just came to this moment where, you know, she was healed. And then at the end of the story, obviously, like she ends up really going to live that true life. That's the true reflection of the value that she had inside at the end of this hero's journey, you know, having co-created this experience. It's like it was her choice to never lose her own internal light. And as a result of that, when the stars aligned properly, like she got to step out into that world externally, too. And I just feel like it's a beautiful metaphor for how this energy kind of works like it's showing us our true beauty our true worth our true value and helping us to alchemize and transcend our previous circumstances like out of our past limitations where we might not have thought possible for ourselves or maybe we just like weren't seeing or perceiving the potential that was a reflection you know of who we really are and what we held inside it's this rags to riches story it's this victim to master, you know, it's it's the the person who's been victimized and beaten down and the underdog never giving up and refusing to be broken and maintaining that goodness and that light and that love and that heart and the heart and then this energy coming through and helping us to, you know, transcend and overcome and to release and bringing the right people and the right circumstances or the right even spiritual experiences into our lives to bridge us out of that old story and into this new story that is aligned with like the truth of our worth and the truth of our beauty and the truth of our value. I feel like kind of collectively across the board in various ways, means, forms, however, that sort of the story that is kind of playing out and coming through to us with this energy yesterday, like I said, today, and then moving into tomorrow as well and through the rest of this week. And I mean, we're going to have Jupiter and Chiron together through basically the month of March. I believe um, there's a four day exact conjunction between these planets between I think it's like March 10th or 11th and like the 14th or the 13th. 13th. And we're building into that now, of course, and then it will take a little while for these planets to separate. So the whole month of March is really colored by this Jupiter Chiron conjunction, which is gaining this greater sense of awareness and sense of like uh, or self-awareness and wisdom that is really helping us to heal and release and move on from things sort of once and for all as well as we're also you guys in this very transitional month that is moving us uh from also one paradigm really into the next with the saturn transit into pisces and especially the pluto transit into aquarius this month as well now all of that being said our cinderella story told another dimension of the energy like i had said we have coming in today is simultaneously an exact mercury saturn conjunction at Dun, 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 30 degrees or 29 degrees of Aquarius, 30 degrees if we're looking at the Sabian symbol. And Mercury, the mind, you guys, messages, ideas, communication, Saturn, hard work, duty, responsibility, concentration, the very last degree of the sign of Aquarius, like we we may feel like we have got to get the job done like there is something urgently pressing today no distractions uh really wanting to focus and that we're just very committed and dedicated to following through on something we could find ourselves in sort of like a a research binge or a work binge today but ultimately you know there is likely to be some again like sense of higher spiritual connection or 
yearning for an understanding that helps us heal or gaining some type of insight or some type of awareness that helps us heal or just some type of sensation or feeling or positive experience that is filling us up on this heart-based level or something that is coming through that is uh, related maybe to like what we're focused on or what we're working on or what we're putting our mind towards somehow. This could also Mercury and Saturn together. Mercury is our communication. Mercury is um, like what we have going on. On. We may uh, feel a bit like cautious or more reserved today. We may be kind of like holding back a little bit more in terms of like saying what we think, talking about our ideas. We may feel like kind of like not expressing or not communicating for some reason, but we are thinking very clearly. This is a very sharp, focused, detail oriented, like ability to concentrate and to like you know, really see the fine print in things and to have a very good grasp about like any concepts that we're dealing with with like, really seeing things clearly. And like I said, there may at this very last degree almost be like sort of a sense of urgency or something that we need to finish something. We need to focus on something. We need to get something done in relation to our ability to move forward somehow as well. It could be coming through, but we're definitely understanding Whatever it is that we're understanding today, we've got a pretty good mental grasp on things. Energy of personal revelations as well. Uh, like I said, with this Chiron, Venus, Jupiter conjunction, there is a lot of self-understanding, especially in the sign of Aries that is coming to us. Self-awareness, self-acceptance as well. That's another dimension of this, like this self-love, this self-acceptance, being able to see the flaws in ourselves and others. When we have Mercury and we have Saturn together, this is a critical eye, okay? This is a more critical mind. This gives us definitely the opportunity and a greater ability to be a little bit judgmental, be a little bit critical, and definitely see the flaws in whatever it is in the world around us. This is some like great editing type of energy. If there's like edit it, edit, edits or like uh, corrections on stuff, corrections as well, you're very likely to catch little mistakes and stuff. So it can have a tendency of making us a bit more like critical or judgmental generally. However, in the context of this expansive heart-based healing energy, uh, we're just likely to be able to like accept and embrace maybe the flaws that we're seeing a little bit easier. And again, you know, we are ready to sort of like release a lot of stuff. We're ready to heal a lot of stuff. We're ready to move on from some things. And we are just not letting the past hold us back anymore. We're ready to like turn a new page and really focused maybe on like wrapping some old things up that we feel like are still holding us back. Again, you know, we could be likely to kind of keep things to ourselves today a little bit. There could also be some very big emotions going on. We do have a moon in Cancer, I believe. Yeah, we've got a moon in Cancer that is going to be early in the day forming a square to the Aries planets in conjunction Venus, Jupiter, and Chiron, also forming a trine to Neptune. So, you know, this just could produce some big, like overflowing, honestly, emotions, especially like in regards to whatever this open hearted healing energy is doing for us. There could be wounds, past wounds, old wounds, very painful wounds, especially about like heart based, relationship based uh, wounds. Also, it could be like mother wounds, childhood wounds that are coming up in this energy with the Cancer moon in the square. But again, and Chiron does trigger wounds, but if wounds are being triggered, there is going to be the remedy. The healing is going to come through as well. So, you know, there may be some things that need to surface so that we can gain this, gain this greater sense of self-awareness, but it, it's surfacing so that it can be alleviated, so that it can be healed. And almost like it could be a bit of of a relief as well, whatever we're sort of letting go of or getting off of our chest or just sort of um, moving away from expressing in this energy and inner ease or comfort coming through a sense of spiritual support or connection with the moon and cancer forming the trine to Neptune and Pisces today. This is, and this Jupiter, Venus, Chiron conjunction, this is also this really profound spiritual connection, spiritual guidance, spiritual support, spiritual heart-based infusion. It's like, 
like it's like the love of universe great spirit god is like really just saturating the planet and like setting our heart on fire today in like a type of way that is creating this like internalized sense of love that makes it so we are not seeking it externally to the same extent that we had you know it is it's like burning away the wounds and the traumas of the past that have had us in a state of inner conflict and it's just happening through this fairy godmother energy that is showing us who we really are and allowing us to love ourselves as well and to see our value recognize our potential this spiritual connection really powerful today with mercury saturn we could honestly another dimension of this energy it is like a very magical energy like it is like fairy godmother energy like there could be just like this very like divinely oriented sort of like mystical feel to what is unfolding for us but with Saturn and Mercury together we could honestly be trying to keep sort of like a more realistic or kind of like a more like intentionally pessimistic perspective in the context of the good things that like seemingly seem to be like apparently playing out for us right now like we may feel like things are a bit too good to be true and we shouldn't get too excited about things I do though feel like we do have blessings coming in like this is positive like this is gifts this is blessings this is things karmically coming to us you know what I mean like this is the healing that we've been waiting for this is the tables are turning turns of events this is things shifting in our favor so I don't feel that you know the things that are happening in this energy are likely to kind of get pulled out from under our feet or be maybe as fleeting as they had been in the past I think the better way to actually use this energy with Mercury and Saturn together instead of maybe being more skeptical or critical of what's happening is to start planning or use it for like strategizing or preparing to lay these new foundations uh in alignment with the good things that appear to be coming for us to sort of prepare for the changes that seem to be making their way into our lives right now and it's like we don't want to doubt the process necessarily but more so trust the process and use the energy to like get organized and get focused and like to like act our faith in regards to expecting the positive outcome that we want to be the outcome that is indeed transpiring. So we want to allow this energy to open our heart, allow ourselves to receive for sure this soul healing that we have going on right now. We don't want to push it away. I found it very interesting, actually, the Sabian symbols where this specific alignment is taking place between Venus and Jupiter today. It's happening at 13 degrees of Aries. That Sabian symbol is a bomb which failed to go off, is now safely hidden from discovery. We also have Chiron right now, only one degree off at 14 degrees of Aries. That Sabian symbol is a serpent coiling near a man and a woman. So when we put this symbolism together, you guys, I feel like this is also kind of describing what this energy is doing for us. It's like some type of crisis has been aver averted. Anywhere where things were like not going in the best trajectory, like we've been saved or we've saved ourselves somehow from an unseen threat or from what we didn't know was like ultimately working towards our demise in some type of way or you know the subconscious programming that had been working against us these inner conflicts that maybe we were unaware of that were sabotaging our growth and our progress or the attachments where we've been surrendering our power and attaching ourselves to things that were toxic for us or that were a detriment to our growth and well-being hidden forces within and without working against us being neutralized through this high heart vibrational energy, this very godmother energy that is coming through right now. And that is the position symbolically out of all of the 360 Sabian symbols that we have this lineup happening. So I feel like that is honestly pretty significant and explanatory as well in the context of how this energy is unfolding there's so much other symbolism today that i feel like is significant in talking about sort of like the inner workings of things being exposed and revealed to us and tests that we are overcoming completing and mastering and transitions in the past and the future sort of juxtaposed to each other moving from one thing into another thing and what we've learned and what we're in the process of learning now there's so many relevant Sabian symbols today. We have the sun at 12 degrees of Pisces, an examination of initiates in the sanctuary of an occult brotherhood. We have the uh, we have the earth at 12 degrees of Virgo, always in a polar opposition to the sun. That Sabian symbol is a bride with her veil snatched away. Gaining a sudden awareness of something, something being exposed, something that we've 
like mastered right the examination of initiates what uh, have we been initiated into this level of self mastery or you know just bringing up exposing like the inner workings of things and the process behind how certain maybe secret organizations and stuff like that operate we of course also have mercury and saturn today 29 degrees the very last degree of the sign of aquarius a critical degree and you know we do have pluto also at 29 degrees of capricorn how we started this month with both saturn and Pluto at 29 degrees of our signs tipping point you guys the end of the end of the end but that Sabian symbol where Mercury and Saturn are today moonlit fields once Babylon are now blooming white purification and reversing the distortion and things setting things back on a proper course for proper growth in alignment with their authentic and true potential and then we've got the bomb that failed to go off which is now safely hidden from this uh, discovery like the crisis averted we have Uranus 16 Teen Taurus, an old teacher fails to interest his students in traditional knowledge. We have the Black Moon at 6 Leo right now, an old-fashioned woman in a flapper. Both of those are talking about sort of the past and the future juxtaposed to each other merged together and trying to figure out how to like find a way to um bridge themselves from one way of being into another way of being that doesn't totally disrupt the flow of information or ideas or tradition and all of that so that is interesting we also have the north node right now the destiny point specifically talking about the bridge a bridge that is in the process of being built the future that we are creating in front of us now out of this past paradigm a bridge being built across the high narrow gorge and the south node at six degrees of taurus a gold rush tears men away from their native soil we already talked about the concept of gold in this circumstance at this in this chapter of the cosmic blueprint as it's unfolding gold would be metaphorical for the hero's journey and for the mastery over our experiences and this uh fulfillment on the soul-based level that's what we get at the end of the journey and that is like like a gold rush tears men away from their native soil. We are releasing the past. We're following our heart based on this recognition of the value that exists within us. And, you know, the Cinderella story that we want to see reflected in our external world as well, because we know that's who we truly are, right? That's who we've always been. And we deserve that. We've got Neptune 25 Pisces, the purging of the priesthood. Again, this purge, this purification of the distortion of the inversion of anything we've been giving our power to that's been distorted distorting our beliefs and um, stealing our like own internalized sense of power and ability to connect to God and to the divine and to spirit and a higher power, which is the uh, very like facilitating and supporting force in this very Godmother energy today. So there's that. We've got Pluto at 30 Capricorn, a secret meeting of men responsible for world affairs. So again, like we are seeing behind the curtain, we are figuring out the inner workings of things and we're coming to the end of an era in terms of power and control dynamics, microcosm, macrocosm, personal lives, world stage, major shifts, major transitions. It's all there, you guys. It's all there. So very powerful week that we are in right now for the good, for the better, healing us, gaining wisdom, gaining strength, gaining a level again of this self mastery coming into alignment with the truth of our heart, recognizing the truth of our value and our potential and what can be done with it. These elevated levels of like self-love and self-worth and self-value that are like also helping us to release ourselves from the things from the past that have not been supporting that and driving us forward. It's this beautiful reinforced feedback loop of vibrations today. And we've got Jupiter, Venus, Chiron together in the sign of Aries that is just this very beautiful alignment that is facilitating all of it. So that's what I'm going to say today, you guys, in terms of the astrology. Let's talk about the tarot for a minute. We have the first card coming out of the deck. We've got the five of wands followed by the hangman, you guys, followed by the six of cups in reverse. On the back of the deck, we have the queen of pentacles. What is this telling us? What is this energy doing for us? What is the Cinderella energy doing for us? Well, anywhere we've been operating in a state of inner conflict or there's been these forces that we have found ourselves continually up against or that, you know, we've been perpetually these battles that we've been perpetually fighting that have been blocking us from growth in any type of a way. There's this 
gaining of awareness, seeing things from a different perspective, opening our eyes, shifting our viewpoint, looking at things from another direction, something that is interfering with the programming that had us in uh, these states of internalized conflict. And it's changing the way that we see the past. We're talking about the Six of Cups. This is about the past. This is about nostalgia. We're talking about the Six of Cups in reverse. This is releasing us from past attachments, okay? Perhaps some childhood attachments, some childhood wounding, some uh, things that have been just with us for a very, very long period of time, maybe that we felt like were just infused with us or part of us, but that we are recognizing in this hanged man energy, in this internalized, like, understanding personal revelation, self-awareness energy that had actually been perpetuating uh, a struggle that maybe we've been having with ourselves. This is what we are gaining an awareness of. What from the past we need to release, we need to move on from, because what did we have on the back of the deck, you guys? The queen of pentacles, because we are recognizing this value and this self-worth within us. And we realize that we should be on this throne. You know what I mean? Like, the divine vision of us is not to be in this perpetual place of struggle and internalized struggle and having to fight the world and feel like the world is fighting us because of things that happened to us in our past that maybe we never recovered from or we didn't even realize were impacting us, that we're keeping us from really truly loving ourselves or really truly being committed to developing our potential or cultivating our value or just, you know, seeing our own internalized sense of worth and value as well. That, you guys, is what we're gaining the awareness of, and that is what is working to heal us in this energy. So that's what the cards are saying as well. Essentially the exact same thing. Let's grab one more card now, you guys. This is a synchronicity card. A message from God, Spirit, Universe that we can use right now over this next couple days just to remind us or that we need to know. Let's see. All right, and we have got two cards. They said we've got Watch Your Thoughts and we have Turn Off the World. So that, that really does make a lot of sense also, because remember I said we do have Mercury and Saturn in the conjunction right now as well. And we are probably like very like focused on something. Our thoughts are uh, very powerful and actually creating tangible outcomes right now in the conjunction with Saturn, which forms and structures. So watch your thoughts. Look diligently lest any man fail the grace of God's of God, Hebrew 12, 15. Be diligent and watchful over your thoughts. Let God's spirit guide you and direct you. Continue moving forward. Victory will be yours. So victory will be yours, you guys. We can kind of rest assured that things are moving in uh, the right direction. We just don't want to get too caught in our head about things. Also, like I said, like we don't want to like over be overly pessimistic about things when we really don't even need to be right now. Also, turn off the world. Folly is joy to him, destitute of wisdom. Wisdom, Proverbs 15 21 looking for love in all the wrong places looking for joy in externals finding joy in lurid drama hate-filled music and other synthetic entertainment this five of wands energy you will find joy within yourself <laughs> the hanged man okay this self-analysis this like turning within turn off the noise and listen to the voice within search for your wisdom within be happy with yourself inside and you will find joy through this alignment that is coming through that is filling us up on these more heart-based levels that is trying to really restore a sense of beauty and love and you know just wisdom and a greater ability to navigate our own experiences from a more elevated positive frequency coming through. So that's what I have to say today, you guys. Messages from the stars, message from the cards, some really po uh, positive, powerful energy that we are in right now, and things should generally be uh, unfolding pretty well for us. So that's what I have to say today, you guys. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you guys did like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends if you think they would like this type of astrology content too. Leave me comments, you guys. I love your comments. I'm so grateful for you being here. Thank you guys so, so much. I have a Facebook page, a Facebook group, Instagram, some other socials in my description box below. I write a blog that goes along with these videos that I post over in the Facebook stuff. So if you're into reading about astrology too, I post that over there. I also post some shorts and stuff like that over there. And um, come back with me tomorrow, you guys. I will be here. We will have more astrology to talk about tomorrow. Uh, specifically, what are we talking 
talking about tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow we have Mercury entering the sign of Pisces. So we're going to have some mentalized shifts going on and we've got black moon energy incoming. So uh, that's where we're going. I'll be here. You should be here too. You don't want to miss it. I will see you then guys. Have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful love fairy godmother day and until tomorrow. Bye guys.